Navis turn to ban. <clears throat> Team Secrets turn to ban. The secret is on. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Navis turn to ban. Okay, hello everybody and welcome once again to Stall Adder, Last Chance. We've got Navi versus Secret. Navi up a game. If they win another, Secret is out. Navi still has to play through uh, some actually really hard matches of OG or the winner between OG and Liquid, I believe. But either way, let's get into it. We got some bans. They're the ones you'd expect. I'm Llama Down Under. I'm joined by Clairvoyance. We got Vengeance on stats. Clairvoyance, do you think it's in the draft where Secret just needs to say, okay, no more aggression for you, Navi? Or do they just need to kind of play better? It's the plays, man. It's the plays. I think last game definitely wasn't the lineup they wanted to fight up into Navi's lineup. Not fight into a Night Stalker with all those squishy intel heroes per se, but they definitely had the setup with the lanes. Again, uh, it's uh, it's a mix of Navi playing really well and playing up to Secret's movements, as well as Secret not adapting the best they could. And talking about adapting, this is one hero you really, really have to adapt and change your playstyle around. It's the Wisp. It's the Io. Yeah. So, uh, exciting. I like it. Uh, I, it is something where I feel like some of the more experienced th teams can handle this. It's not it's not the Huskar, you know? I feel like Huskar is a hero where everybody just says, Oh, you just have to counter him. You just have to play good against the Huskar. And we see experienced teams fall to Huskar. Io, it's something which sometimes teams are good at adapting to. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Secret have an idea of what to do. Windrunner, certainly an excellent start. Let's get our shackles with, what, 50% degree of error? action happening spirit. yeah and uh it looks like the Ooh. ember spirit for eternal envy as well wind ranger and ember spirit two very very good heroes that synergize with each other their pickoff potential in the mid game is massive and you know i i actually prefer like the slaughter being picked up second here but it's fine i mean you got one of the best ember spirit players if not the best ember spirit player on your team I actually agree with you on the slaughter. My only concern with Windrunner and Ember is both of them are heroes that need a little bit to get going. Mm. Uh, yeah, Windrunner can have a lot of game impact, as can Ember if he gets the levels, uh, even earlier on. But of course, Ember looking for that Battle Fury and then even a crit after that to be kind of scary damage output. And Windrunner wants the Ags, maybe a Blink Dagger, maybe a damage item. Again, she's someone who maybe 25 minutes, Secret is terrifying. But before that, it, a lot of it's going to depend on how well Weeha can use this Windrunner. And we know if we know anything about Weeha, it's that Wind Ranger and Meepo, his top two heroes, Wind Ranger, one of the best in the world. Um, I just wanted to sidetrack for a second here. Seconds, I'm really? looking back towards Secret's last five games, including the one we just casted. Yep. Two games against Vega, two games against CIS Rejects, and now the game against Navi. Uh, I believe we have the stat stats, our statsman friend handy. Um, the scoreboard for every one of those games. I believe I believe the kill ratio was always 75 3 to 1 75 to 25. Ooh. Um it might have been it's actually it was actually worse in some against like CIS rejects for example and and Vega even. I can't recall but if you want to just pull out the stats and maybe maybe give us like better numbers cuz I really think like 3 to 1 kill ratio against every team in like three best of 3 series and this is not exactly their biggest hurdle. Right right now it is yeah. because this is their survival on the line but Again, what is going on with Secret? You have to beg the question. Yeah, I agree with you, and it is something where it does feel like they've been in a bit of a slump. It's something also that we saw, though, out of Liquid. Um, Liquid was in a bit of a slump between the major qualifiers, where when they didn't get into the major, and then kind of up until now, where they were losing to Tier 2 teams, and it just maybe was that they couldn't scrim exactly who they wanted. Could be that Secret took a bit of a break after so many tournaments, was having a bit of a chill pill. But we also do have a stat, and we'll see. Vengeance is probably looking for those other ones, but Weeha is 12 and 6 
on this Windrunner. So hopefully that'll help pull them out of this hole. But again, Navi banning the Magnus. And uh, yeah, it's actually, no, Lost Time Secret banned the Mag. So this one, I just want to talk about the Mag for a little bit. Obviously the Ursa, I'm pretty sure we've seen that Secret likes to use the Ursa. But I feel like the Magnus isn't someone... He's a hard offlaner to run because of the amount of uh, the cooldown on Skewer as an escape. Is there any reason he's suddenly popular? I mean, we say popular, but I think I, I think there's only a handful of teams that run him. I think uh, obviously EG ran him a few times in the recent major tournaments, once at MLG and once at uh, the majors. Mm -hmm. OG, I don't think picked Magnus at all. Um, yeah, it looks like just Secret, EG, and some of the other CIS teams. I, I personally don't think the heroes are amazing. You know, Eternal Envy, uh, he believes the heroes one of the best heroes in Dota. And obviously anybody who does amounts of RPs or play play Magnus like Arise mm -hmm. or S4, they might make the hero really look strong. But it's just a lot of execution to rely on. And Dota just doesn't give you room to have that execution sometimes. If the enemy wants to focus you with a counter pick, they will do so. And they'll do so with ease depending on the situation. Oh yeah, we saw a last game, the lack of space. I mean, I think part of it was the draft. I'm I'm not a huge Wraith King fan, I, I'll admit it now. He's not one of my favorite uh, carries to either watch or see, you know, see in games. But it did also feel like Team Secret was just run down by the very aggress aggressive lineup of Na'Vi. Now, let's talk combos with this IO. Obviously the Tiny is banned out. That's what Secret said they were more afraid of. Do you think we'll get to see some Chaos Knight action? Or is there uh, another Unlikely in my partner? opinion. I oh. think, if anything, it's more likely to be a Seven, which will give you the 20 Marmor with the Warcry, yeah. and it's pretty good against Ember in a sense that Ember is really good at kiting, but if the Seven ever gets on top of you and with a Blink Dagger and an Eye, I'm sure he'll find an opportunity. He'll spurst you down. Slaughter did get banned. Uh, again, I, I thought Seeker really should have opted for that earlier, and I don't, I don't know if Ember would have been banned. Um, Witch Doctor. You know, no venture, no gain, and nothing really was lost, I guess. Witch Doctor is the pick up here, and again, with the core, I, I don't see much other than other than Bristleback or Sven. Personally. Yeah, I I would definitely, you know, just Chaos Knight's always fun. He's fun to cast, he does crazy stuff, but as you said, Sven, obviously, a better pick up with the uh, way to deal with some of the Dazzles minus armor. Yeah, the thing and... with CK is, like, Ember is like, like, CK is one of the worst heroes in the game against them. It's like it's very hard to get on top of your chain. Your stun actually is a is a projectile, and Ember has like way many five that or dodge that kind of. And then he also mm -hmm. has the flame guard, which blocks that as well, the initial onslaught yeah. of it. And when you get illusions, he can just cleave off them. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, and apparently it's Akmo, like in Havost. Oh gosh. Oh, no, they're Russians. I'm, apparently I have pronounced. I'm sorry in advance or in. This isn't in advance, I'm sorry just for pronouncing that wrong. I will, if we go to a game three, I'll have Leo, our wonderful admin who hosts, who is obviously fluent in Russian and English, give me a quick lesson on how to say ACMO. Oh gosh, but ACMO just sounds so cool. I assumed it was like, chill friend of Axis. I'm sure it's fine, Lama, I'm oh. sure it's fine. Yoki, Yoku, <laughs> ACMO, ACMO. Uh, Either way, Havost, we have two Xbox, bizarre. It's, it's all the same stuff, I'm sure. Probably somewhere her boast is, you know, very upset about the Xbox, but we have Timbersaw, and I have to say, I like Timbersaw, I'm not sure he's the right hero here, obviously reactive armor a great way of keeping you safe in that offlane, keeping you uh, able to stay in it, but you've also got a Quap on the deck, and Timbersaw is not a big fan of burst damage. No, certainly not, but I do think so far he has a lot of tools to withstand the damage. The only stun so far is coming out from Witch Doctor, which is in the form of a paralyzing cask, and he can probably chain away from that in time. Even if yeah. he gets a blink dagger, it'll be that much easier as well. That much more mobility for him. And I think the real threat so far is the Queen of Pain Orchids. But how easy can she get the Orchids this game against the against the Weeha Wind Ranger? Five seconds. Okay, so apparently Secret has been on a losing streak since the best of five at Frankfurt. Yeah, they've, so, they've lost every series, and I know that, yeah. if I recall correctly, against Vega, the scoreboard was like 20 to 5, 30 to 5, something of that sort. And against CIS Rejects, it was the same thing, like 30 to 10, 30 to 10, some stuff like that. So I just want to know the ratio, Ooh. the kill ratio they had. Yep, it was 24 to 7 versus OG, and then 33 to 41, 12 to 27. Um, So those, not grand. And then against Vega, 33 to 11, 26 to 7. It's, what, it's exactly what you were saying. Um, it's 
It could also just be, it's, I think it's something where a lot of us don't talk about it, but I mean, you have sports teams, they go into slumps, you know, maybe things hurt a little bit, maybe you just need to go as a group to a sauna, relax a little bit, uh, I think it's a bit harder oh, yeah. for these guys, <laughs> but you know, just sometimes... They have the option, I'm sure they would take that. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's actually pretty normal, and I also actually think it's good for the scene. I'm a much bigger fan, don't know if any of you are fighting game fans, but just watched Capcom no, Cup. Stop. The scene is so much more exciting when every team can beat every team. Of course you don't want it at the extent, expense of maybe one team performing poorly, but I do think it's something where the scene is healthier when we have a lot of good tier 1 teams. Oh yeah, yeah. If it's certainly a lot more entertaining when it's volatile and I guess uh, to draw up a parallel, I know the CSGO scene generally has more of that ability where they can, Nine any team can take a, take a set off each other, but... In the, in the meantime, again, secret. Uh, definitely not playing up to par. Uh, it, it could be one of those slumps that they have, and we don't know. Only time will tell. But this has all been since Frankfurt, Frankfurt, and it has all been Star Ladder as well. So maybe that has something to do with. It. Yeah, yeah. It could just be that maybe uh, they're not they're not feeling so good with the Russian tournaments. You know, it's maybe could three be. two two tournament equals three <laughs> two two situation. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, but we've got. Um, a nice Earthshaker ban, AA as well, Navi saying they don't really want to play into that. Obviously also AA is a great Five counter to IO, where you relocate in, and AA is like, great, I would love to know exactly where to place my Ice Blast. <laughs> um, so, Secret, let's see what they're picking up as their other Disruptor support. Disruptor Oh, Bounty Hunter. Ooh. Okay, we get to see Pilot Eye kill some couriers. I love it. Although, yeah. I feel like it's harder, as the Bounty Hunter has become more understood and more played, it's really hard to make plays with him, and oh goodness, oh, it's Husker, how goodness. did that happen? It happened. Okay, so we have to actually start looking right away. It's a Wisp Huskar. It's not as good as the Dazzle Huskar, but it mitigates a lot of damage to the point where if Secret aren't keen on bursting down the Huskar, they might be in trouble. And they have two tools to deal with the Huskar, really. Wind Ranger. Timbersaw. And if you want to kind of consider Bounty Hunter as an early game counter that can rotate and then try to fight up the Huskar, it's going to be very, very hard against the healing Witch Doctor. But it, yeah. they could do it if they set up the lanes properly. But again, the main threats are Wind Ranger and Timbersaw. And Timbersaw, to be honest, it, it, it does fall off. Yeah, and here's the official stat because Statman has pulled it off. They have lost, with the exception of one game versus Liquid, with a 2.8. So essentially that 3 KD ratio. Uh, so it's, It just it's seems not... like they're dying all over. Like the yeah. heroes, their heroes just fall, enemy team just kills them over and over again. Like giving Now they're gonna Huska! They're against a Huska now! They're gonna- everybody's yeah, this, gonna die! this could be bad. <laughs> So, as you mentioned, they have a couple of tools to deal with it. I really wasn't expecting the Huska. I think it's really ballsy Oh, it's to a pick... great pick here. Really good here. But there's a wind runner, you know, it's, it's, it's just a lot of physical damage and a dazzle on the other team to bring some minus armor. But we'll see. And as you mentioned, it it doesn't have any... I mean, there's no pure damage coming out of Secret. And well, they Timbersaw are gonna... is a pure damage monster, but oh, the well, thing with he... Huskar is like, people think, oh, you just get pure damage right away and you run this hero down. No, no, yeah. no, it's not like that. Unless you have something like Omni Knight that drops a lot of pure damage as well mm -hmm. as a repel, which makes him not use uh, Burning Spears, which is the main source of his damage. Yeah. Um, you have to get a ridiculous amount of physical damage or something that just runs him over early game by fighting or whatnot. And the thing with Timbersaw is, he's like very instantaneous pace like once he chains in and uses his whirling death the only thing you have to watch out for is chakram and you can actually toggle through chakram because it does damage uh based on a time tip. yeah that's what i was gonna say even though the timbersaw has some pure damage it's nothing it's not like a co-op where it's big enough that i think you can see exactly. he's below it, it a doesn't threshold. execute right away so it's not it's not yeah as you said it's not the execution type of pure damage and then the physical damage will be lacking early on but upside it is something where if they can bring a little bit of health to the huskar he's a hero that farms enemy heroes he doesn't really farm creeps particularly well right so if he doesn't get off to a great start maybe he doesn't get some kills he doesn't have the easiest of catch-up mechanics and then i do think an ember spirit and a windrunner can take over the game but relocating huskar i mean that's the stuff of nightmares Ugh. oh and you know what i really like what nobby's doing here it's something I enjoy it particularly because I haven't seen them do it before. An aggro trialing with the Wisp as well as Witch Doctor. You know, the moment you see these heroes, you wouldn't really think that they're the, mo they're the most uh, killing or thirsty type of supports that can play in the aggressive lane. But if you think about it, the amount of sustain that these heroes will give each other will make this Huskar play like a necro. Like, it's going to be very hard to kill him, and if you commit, mm -hmm. you might just end up dying to a lot of heals. Now, in mid, Pilot Eye already being the pain that we all know. I'm actually kind of surprised he doesn't have, like, super fancy Bounty Hunter cosmetics. But either way, he's eaten Dendi Sentry. He's ready to just kind of throw out the casual auto attacks there. And I think Weeha 
this mid lane is going to be definitely in his favor unless he overextends and gives Dendi a kill. So in the bottom lane though, they're running the Axmo. Axmo. We'll we'll figure it out one day. We've got Quap with a witch doctor against uh, Envy. And ah, so it looks like Artstyle actually rotated bottom after dropping the sentry saying, hey, yeah. it's going to be a solo timber saw. Worst thing that can happen is probably a wisp, uh, pardon me, or bounty hunter coming in. And wisp Huskar can probably actually fight up this duel until like 4 level 5. So depending on how the early CS goes and who gets the first uh, set of items, this lane, like this lane setup as a whole could really, really favor Na'Vi. Yeah. But as I say that, we are 7-3 at the middle line versus 2-0 of Dendi's quite well. Yeah, I mean, it is something where I feel like Weehaw's always, uh, just with the way his hero works up, and as we say, that Huskar is being Huskar. It looks like Pilot die in a world of hurt, and he goes down, tries to get the creep to deny him. No oh, goodness, now this creep is covered in blood. I'd not seen that before. That is disgusting. But yeah, we, we have some... Uh... Oh, okay, so Io Huskar is not very commonly picked. It's really interesting, but it has a 100% 100, 100 win rate, this patch, so... Looking grand, and in the bottom lane, we got actions. Alt style is taking a lot of damage from Envy. Go, Envy, kill him! And uh, we do see some look at it go action, but on the wrong end. But they get the dazzle as well, and there's no way Envy can catch up to that blinking co-op. So I think it's it's a tie, but at the same time, I have to say, considering that I think this lane is really scary for an Ember Spirit, I mean, I just feel like all the lanes, except for this mid, vary in favor of Na'Vi. Yeah, I think for the time being, it uh, it really seems that way. And Axmo did something I, I feel like uh, could have been slightly better. So he picked up the Invis room with the Poison Touch still ticking on him for another two secs. Mm -hmm. If he just waited, he would have been able to salve and then pick up the Invis rune, come in. Because MB had no vision of the rune itself, and he would have to just assume that the enemy got a haste or an Invis or something like that. But you can never really play too adaptive to something that you don't see. Could have landed a kill, I think, before the Dazzle rotated. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. I The reason I think this lane is so in favor of Na'Vi is just that, even just a point in that Shadow Strike, it is such painful harass for an Ember Spirit. And Cobb can just sit there pounding away at him, and he doesn't have an easy way to farm. I mean, it's also, you know, two ranged versus one ranged, one melee. Exactly, exactly. It, and he doesn't is have a, a PMS harass. yet. I'm oh. actually surprised he's not going in to pick up PMS right away. Yeah, I am surprised as well. I mean, yeah, he does have the ring for extra protection, which will probably end up being an Aquila, but that's not enough against this lane. So it's going to be a rough ride. And taking a peek back at middle, middle now Weehaw is definitely dominating. Yes, Dendi, he's about to hit level 5. He'll stop being able to raise down creeps, but he has definitely fallen a little behind. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really hard lane setup. In fact, the Windranger is naturally good against SF 1v1. It's also the fact that the, there's a Bounty Hunter missing. Yeah, yeah, the sentry did not out early, so as long as Bounty Hunter is off the map, you just never know exactly. I feel like these days against Bounty Hunter, I mean, we've seen it so many times where the Bounty Hunter comes in, even if you eat the Bounty Hunter sentry, he's going to have more than enough time to eat yours as well. So I'm actually a little surprised that mids don't start with two. Of course, the Bounty Hunter will also start with two. So, it, it you know, it's, it's kind of, you generally lose, but... It just seems like maybe you need more support or another way of dealing with the bounty hunter. I think I think this is fine though. I think uh, just semi sacking the mid lane and hoping Dendi can stack for oh. himself kind of. Another yeah, they say bottom. that. Oh no, he actually gets some searing chains under the tower. Can he kill up Axmo? He's boning. Oh. He gets the kill. Axmo went deep for that dazzle and uh, Envy gets it. it. Yeah, Oof. that's not worth it for him at all. He lost the support for a carry and he's gonna get solo EXP now, picked up his bottle yeah. of course, and just picked up boots on the side shop. Still no PMS, I guess he feels he doesn't need it with the Dazzle, but either way, they've been getting the kills. So this lane is actually working out for them far better than I thought it would. Yeah, I think Co-op just overextending, oh, I mean obviously... Have boots. Oh, oh no, he's gonna get run down, but here comes Axmo, can he throw out the slow in time? Envy, he pops up that Flame God, but he's still very, very slow, he's burning though, one more auto-attack onto Art Style, and now let's see what they can do to this Quap as she blinks away. I was gonna say, pop blink, CD, it is 15 seconds at level 1, folks, and that's why aggressively going for kills in a lane up against someone who can either heal bomb you if the creeps are nearby, or searing chains you, which actually do a lot of damage considering that Quap is a very squishy hero, uh, it's questionable. Yeah, it's, uh, his play is very aggressive again. It's uh, it's a lot easier to just rely on being able to run people down on the side lanes, just like what M did. He had boots, he recognized the enemy didn't, and just took the distance and just went for it. And nice, nice stun coming out. Yeah, <laughs> good, good coconut bounces. Well played, old style. <laughs> um, but we're going to see MV taking a lot of harass. I mean, he's doing a bit better. I'll have to show it with net worth since oh, he's got... Dendi. Oh, no, he's being run down in the mid lane, but it looks like he'll be fine, as you said. Wow, I this is actually, I think, really dangerous. Obviously, Weehaw does have Windrun, but 
uh, and probably made that aggressive play because they checked Dendi's mana, seeing that it was low. But you have to be really careful. You overextend against a Shadow Fiend, a couple raises to the face, and you die. Yeah, but the nice thing now is uh, he saw the bounty before, so he's going to be able to stack for himself. And again, because every time he sees the bounty, he's able to bottle crow like this because he has the ward planted, and I guess bounty just uh, invis under the vision. But regardless, he's bottle crowing, he's getting stacks up. This is why Shadow Fiend is just so good at even if you lose the lane, you'll scale better and you'll fuck. I also wanted to- oh, as we say he's farming better, we see uh -oh. him getting ganked by Envy. What is this gank? He's gonna go down. This is- that was- that was super rude. Four-man gank. Yeah. On Bendy there. He's getting the treatment. Oh, they want to do something about yeah. the stack. I think it's a really good play. We're going to be seeing TPs coming in from Witch Doctor. He can definitely try, but I don't think he has anything he can do. I mean, you throw out a stun, it's just going to stun the wrong people, and maybe he'll go down. Searing Chains, he ends up throwing the stun, but it just hits MB. It doesn't end up bouncing, and they have slows. MB eats a mango just in case, and now he's level 6. He has Remnant as well. Here comes Dijeral on the Huskar. Let's see if he can pound into anyone, but it doesn't look like it. And while MB is, you are on fire, it's not going to be enough. Sorry, that is my favorite tooltip. Um, I don't know if you know the whole you are on fire. It's all capital letters when you're being burnt by Husker. Oh. Uh, okay, know. we'll see. We'll see if we'll see if anybody gets it thrown on them because it is the funniest thing. It is like the only tooltip in the game, I think, that is all caps. And Pilot Die, I don't believe they saw him re. They saw him, they saw him going to go yeah. game with the Shadow Walk, but he okay. was there in range to sap EXP, and so was Envy. So that that creep camp, whatever was left over there, was split into three ways, and then they got like two three hundred yeah. EXP out of it. And while obviously he's a big fan, oh, okay, never mind. That's just Pilot Die standing. Um, while obviously Dendi's gonna be very happy to get the farm, he also needs levels. We can see he's only level seven. Envy as this kind of bombing carry who shouldn't be such a high level is already six, and uh, Timbo also level seven. So M Dendi's having a hell of a time. Yeah, and as you can see with Envy, he's picked up his Aquila uh, again. Probably not to finish his GMS, but he just wants his TP money in. Most likely gonna rotate to the safe lane. Oh, as I say that, actually, Dazzle's bottom, so I don't know for sure. I know for a fact he doesn't actually want to lean against the Huskar, though. It's like he yeah. might be going for it. I mean, if Weeha comes for a gank, this is really nice movement. Let's be honest, though. Does anybody want to lane against a Huskar ever? Pretty much no. So I'm at Huskar like... at 8 minutes. That's not a fun lane, whoever you are. Yeah. So we'll see if they can make it happen. Weeha, of course, does have two points up in that shackle already and some power shot action. He could go for the shackle. It would hit now. He opens with the auto attack. There's more than enough to shackle him, and he doesn't go for it. It's really hard under the tier 1 because TP rotations can be coming in, and we see it. Axmo, he's there and ready, but he's not even level 6. And now Dijeraw, he's going ham, but also not level 6. Less oh, the than 150. Puppy doesn't have a TP. Oh no, Puppy, he's gonna have to try to walk it off. He does have that shallow grave. He needs to be very careful about the timing. Oh, he doesn't manage to get it off. And it looks like he'll be the only casualty, as we do see MV uh, has a creep wave on him. He he's just taking them on a journey. This is, you know how some people walk their dogs. Um, MV is just very politely making sure that the animals get to see some good enrichment and outdoor time. But oh goodness, he's walked right into a Shadow Fiend. I don't think that's where you want it to be, MV. Where is his active remnant? Oh, it's not even in a grand spot. So MV going to be... Just TPing out, actually, a little bit surprised Dendi didn't maybe think about going for that, but of course with the instant remnant, it might just be a waste of mana to get him low. Yeah, it would have been a waste of time, I think, because he already used the two raises that he could guarantee the hit on the Ember Spirit for, so... Recognizing that, just that he did as much as he can, he's gonna port top now and try to save that tower. Looks like he's able to get the deny, so nice movement. In the meantime, uh, I guess we haven't seen too much of the Queen of Pain in action ever since the, the bottom. Yeah, it does feel like she's been having a rough time finding a good spot to be. She's now popped over into middle. She's getting a little bit of farm there. But a lot of heroes, again, for Secret lining up here. They actually open up onto uh, onto Envy, and she aggressively blinks forwards. Where is the shackle? It manages to get it. Where's the focus fire, though? Instead, just the power shot. And now, with the threat of Dendi's raises, Mia has to back out. I feel like... Ah, probably too risky to go for the kill there. Just my bloodlust wanting the players to do it, so... Yeah, I I'm glad he actually didn't throw out the Sonic Wave. Looks like MB was, uh, he was actually baiting it out the whole time. And I'm not sure if pings would have come into play in that situation, but regardless, he still holds on to his ultimate on the Queen of Pain, so nothing yeah. really lost again. Yeah. They're on the meantime, they want to do something on him, but even with three heroes in the in the vicinity, uh, can they is the real question again. Yeah, MB he got is gonna the... spot out Wisp here. Uh, yeah, he's gonna spot him out. Does Wisp- no creeps nearby to tether to, so an easy kill. Okay, this is Envy's third DD rune of the game so far, I think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm every not... time the DD has been crucial in getting the kill, so. Yeah, I'm not saying that, you know, obviously these are very high skill players, but something 
love it or hate it about Dota, there is a luck component and runes a big portion of it. So I feel like Envy, I don't know if they can get the kill on bottom with this DD, especially since it just expired, but you could suddenly make Dieter Raw's life a little bit more dangerous. Although he has support coming in. And this is where it's also really rough. DTR, I think I have to say he's playing really well. Just general Dota things. Making sure that he doesn't extend too far out. And that way it's really hard to gank him. Well, he is on the weep now. So if they yeah. want to do anything, probably now. There's some pings coming out. But again, Envy's not. Not a toss and get out. And as you mentioned, even though he was affected by uh, almost 18 minus Alma. Because the weep was sticking up. Not feeling like there was a whole heap they could do, and now Highlight Die realizing that he may be in a bit of a pickle. Envy actually remnants in. Okay, he's he's just casually farming the enemy woods. No, no need to uh -oh. do his own woods. Oh, they're gonna actually give it a bit of a go onto Dendi. The stun does come out, and they've put down sentries, so Envy away. Um, this game's a lot calmer, I would say, than the last game. Secret already doing a lot better than they were. And we can see the game is suddenly starting to fall in their favor. There's a mid tower being taken. We have a relocate onto Pylite Die, and they don't manage to touch him with the dust. So unfortunately, this relocate gank gonna really whiff. Yeah, in the meantime, Dendi does get the runes. It's a nice thing for them. Somebody we haven't touched upon in a while, Misery, just being at top here, free farming the entire game, I, I think, basically. He was going up against the Huskar and whatnot early, so it's very, it's been very easy for him, very quiet for him for the last six minutes. Surprisingly enough, he's not high on the net worth, but again, Timbersaw not getting kills, so you're limited to farming neutrals. Not yeah. The best situation. MB. Oh gosh, MB is a ham master. Do they have detection? It doesn't look like it, and ham not gonna pay off this time. Invis rune for Queen of Pain, keeping her alive, and it looks like the Regus is gonna be happening. What else do they have? I mean, they they see this. I'm pretty sure with secret, you can see that someone's being tethered, if you look closely. So, um, not not the best gank attempt either way. We're gonna be seeing Dendi taking a little bit of harass, and that'll be it. Okay, let's talk some item pickups. Obviously, Weeha, he's looking towards that Aghanim Scepter Husker. We can see that he's gonna build Helm of the Dominator. Already got that omelet. Do you think this is a Solar Crest game? As he goes in for the first dunk, Puppy, he's gonna just try to TP out, but will it be enough? He's got five stacks on him. He's gonna have to use that heal in base. And oh, I'm not sure the fountain's gonna oh be enough. Oh my Puppy's god, dead. it's actually gonna kill him. Yep. Oh, I didn't even mouse over that you're on fire! Oh. Whiffed. Completely whiffed. But yeah, that, that's the power of Huskar, and I was gonna say, I'm not sure if he's gonna be a Solar Crest Huskar. Heaven's Halberd is something that's also popular on that hero. Also really nice against Windrunner, who she might not have her BKB up for a while, just with depending on the pace of the game. So I'm really interested to see what exactly Dietra Ra decides to go with, and how many more little heroes he picks up. Dendi, the shackle doesn't last though, but in comes the Chakram. Dendi's gonna try to walk through it, and now suddenly Weeha in a lot of trouble, pumps that Windrun, but he's gonna go down either way. Lots of things hitting him, and with the Windrun over gonna be popping to those burning spears. These plays from Secret kind of almost too aggressive, I would argue. It feels like they keep going for plays under tower, and I think the game's actually in their favor if they just sit back and farm, because yeah, their heroes they scale split, better. I agree. If they just split push and take it slow, they could definitely keep going in their favor, but as it stands, you know, going for all these kills with these magical damage heroes and not having enough of the, enough of the tools to either burst or commit to bursting or commit to breaking their heals, I mean... Yeah. Really hindering their process to maintain map control. Yeah. In the meantime, Envy's almost got his thoughts, so that's good news for them. They did lose some kills and again, Timbersaw doesn't look like he's been doing too much. He's actually picked up an urn of shadows. Um not an item that I would expect. Yeah. And they're gonna see um what they can do about the side pushing. I think Timber's saying with that urn he wants to be more involved in the kills. And of course urn is also, I believe, isn't urn pure damage? Am I Crazy. It is, it is. Yeah, yeah. so it, I mean, it's okay, a nice it's, item to have against Huskar in general. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be the best against Huskar, but as you just pointed out, it, it's nice, it's something, and it's always extra stuff. Uh, and I feel like every team should have an own, but either way, I wouldn't be surprised if Secret maybe just decide to slow things down here and uh, keep up their farming, because I really do think if this goes late, obviously Bounty Hunter wants to be getting those strike kills and so on, but if this goes late, Windrunner, Ember, outdo a Huskar Shadow Fiend any day of the week, and the co-op will start to become a little bit negligible, because although the ult is pure damage, you can tank up a little bit and also pick up BKBs since the rest of the toolkit's magic, so. Yeah. Again, I only, I only question the urn because... I feel like, uh, as you said, it looks like he wants to get more involved. But right now, for the last 5-10 minutes, he's been getting a fixed amount of gold every minute just by yeah. farming. And you can kind of gauge what you're dealing with. Just an 800, 800, uh, yeah, 800 gold sink that 
that you're not making any use of at all. I mean, it's basically a Sobe mask with this guy right now. It would have been much better on Bounty Hunter, I feel, who's actually going mm -hmm. around playing near the Huskar. Or playing near other heroes in general. So, yeah. It's going to delay his Bloodstone that much. I think this Bloodstone could have actually come up by now if he didn't have... Oh, and Puppy again. Is he going to get dunked? It looks like he is. Goodbye, sweet Puppy. He actually throws out the weave, understanding that he's not going to make it into the fountain. Oh, we can quickly... Oh, I miss it. Um, DJ Rai actually got pretty low there from his omelet toggling, and now they are back in, I think, hoping that the weave would do work when people came up to fight here, but instead, all of Secret, they need to get out Misery. He's going to Temper Chain away. DJ Ra is taking a lot of damage. Can they turn and fight? There's going to be a Shackle. Where's the Focus Fire from Weeha? It's on cooldown. He used it on the tower. And that means that they can't engage in the slightest quap. Maybe she can throw out a Shadow Strike here, seeing if she can catch someone out. They don't have anything to stop Weeha here. Going to just, you know, walk over him with the Tether. Doesn't stun, and Envy is going to get on out. Has those bots up, has an Aquila. Probably going to work on the Battle Fury now, and he might be able to get it around that 25 minute mark, depending on how this game goes, but holy, Hannah, he's gonna go for the wave cut. Yeah, oh, can is. he get the courier? Kill the courier, MV! Oh, no, I, I don't oh. think, he needs three hits, and he's not gonna get three hits while the courier is moving at the flying movement. He so he's gonna cut the creep wave three. Still right now, actually. He's gonna pour it elsewhere now, and looks like if they can get the follow-up at bottom, this is the best follow-up Secret has this game so far, in terms of anything that Navi does and a response to it. Yeah, nice 100%. You know, you're not you're not gonna fight into them right now. You're not fighting into a Huskull until you get much bigger. So just lay off and get Envy some items. Because honestly, if he gets Battle Fury, even just Battle Fury Chrysalis, I think he starts being a real problem for Navi yeah, to handle. Yeah, he becomes that much more of a threat to the Huskar, as well as just the combo in general. You can you can imagine Navi's team fight heavily predicates around them kind of five manning into a death ball around the Huskar, and the cleave might actually end up doing work. If not, just bursting Wisp and Witch Doctor. I mean, they're so they're so fragile. Also, they have an Ember, Timbersaw, Windrunner into a lineup that only has Paralyzing Cask as a stun. I oh just realized. Goodness. So, Ember... Oh, I almost... <laughs> Do you have a... I have a bind for when Roshan is. Never mind. It looks like all style. He's going to throw out the physical damage, but Envy's just going to kill him off. No such luck there. So Envy getting another kill under his belt. I almost, when Rosh went down, popped my hotkey for... I press Y up, and then it takes timer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, almost ping the clock as well, but you can't ping when you're observing, because otherwise the players might see it. Oh, you can't ping items all times. So, yeah. I almost did it there. I've been playing a bit too much myself. But not, not here or there. Dendi, he has finished up a mech and Assange, and I really think this solidifies Oh gosh, Secret, they're in a bad spot. Weeha, he's gonna try to TP out on this one. He may just oh, go no. down. It's gonna be the Aegis, and that was immediately burnt, and I don't think he has a way out since he just used oh, Requiem of Souls. Goodbye, Weeha. A couple more auto attacks, and he's gonna fall. Really nice play there from Navi, catching him out. They just completely nullified the effect of getting that Roshan. Yeah, that was a really, really nice pickup. Axmo, I think he recognized that with his ultimate coming out, they can burst him down through the, through the Wind Ranger win run. Yeah. Andy and Axe mode is working in conjunction. They're using both their spells, the raise as well as the ultimate. Very yeah. nicely done by them. Huge kill. Yeah, Navi to... really wanted map control with that Aegis as well as Ember jumping around and Bounty Hunter, but that's a, that's in a slightly weaker form in art style. A caught out again, but this time he's got a little bit of backup, but there's so many heroes from Secret in the lineup. We can see Misery coming in. They're going to throw out the Paralyzing Cask. It actually hits onto Envy, but no more. At the same time, he doesn't have Flame God anymore, and here comes Dendi. If he can get any sort of action in onto Envy, he's going to go down, but they're going to slow them up with that Chakram. And uh, actually has to pop the mech to keep Alt Style alive, but there is a hasted DJ Raw. Misery, you need to... Uh, yeah, you need to do that. The Timber Chain action away. I was gonna say, I feel like the name of the game here for Secret should be, for the next maybe even 15 minutes, Split Push. Because with Dendi having up this mech, and the fact that they have a Huskar, I just don't think their fight stands up in the slightest. I mean, Bounty Hunter's bringing nothing to the fight right now. Dazzle might heal, but it doesn't matter too much against those Burning Spears. It's uh, it's definitely gonna be hard. It's it's a sad situation if the Dazzle can grieve. Let's assume that the target's gonna still die because okay. of the Burning Spear DOT as well as how long it stays on the target. Whopping 8 seconds for like 160 damage total. Every spear, by the time you cast the Grave, the target's always gonna have 5 to 8 of them on top, so... Yeah, pretty much guaranteed. It does feel like Split Push might be the way to go. Um, at the same time, Nobby has done a really great job of getting rid of this net worth lead and the oh, experience... Ever, he doesn't oh, have a remnant! No. He has one off to the side, but he doesn't have a good escape path. He's going to end up running all the way down. He's looking for a spot to bots out, but oh no, they have a stun! Where's the paralyzing call? It's going to come out, and Envy goes down. And not only does he go down, that was his mega kill streak. Envy had been doing an excellent job of managing to pick up kills across the board. It's going to put back that timing on that Battle Fury. 
That that was honestly just thing around around the enemy woods. They they've had this place like warded and vision provided around the area by pilot die for the longest time. So to an extent, he's feeling safe because he got a lot of kills here too. But not having a background in that situation, I mean, it was up, or, or rather, it just came up. So. Speaking of dire vision, they have woods like they want to be really aggressive, and I think this tells us a lot about secret. They really do want to get those pickoffs, but. I just don't think they have the right composition for it right now, you know? It's it's really hard to take advantage. Again, they just can't fight into them at all, so the only, yeah. only way you can take advantage of these wards is just by uh, looking at where the enemy is and dodging them. And then just not getting exposed in the in the woods there without a remnant. It's not the situation you want to be in this situation. Yeah. Misery does have the Bloodstone that you mentioned up. Now, of course, that item received heavy nerfs in 6.85. So it's not kind of the, oh, look, Tempestor, he has a Bloodstone. Things going to snowball from here. It's still something where he needs to put in a lot of work. Do you think this is an Ags Tempestor game, or do you need something like the Shivas to help your team out ASAP? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Ags is really good against the Huskar, as well as the general push coming out of Navi. But Shivas wouldn't be too bad. Um, oh, we're having an aggressive go on to Weeha. This Orchid is out on Axmo, and now with a bunch of heroes coming in with that relocate, Weeha's just dead. He knows that he's trying to fight, but he's gonna fall eventually, actually to the IO. And now Na'Vi looking like they're in a good place to push a tower if they so choose. Or just go back to farming, I mean... Mm. They're, they're definitely in the driver's seat right now. They're the ones in control, and they're controlling the pace, of course, very nicely. Nice track coming out of Pala Die, but again, it doesn't give that much vision. Just walks towards, walks just by the edge of the sentry, yeah. but they don't have enough chase down as well as the lockdown necessary to keep up. It's like just a mid push follow up, and uh, still the problem stands that, especially without the Wind Ranger, they cannot fight into this Huskar, who already has the Halberd up, as you mentioned earlier. Not yeah, enough tools. He decided to go halberd. Not I, I thought you know it's kind of a toss up since there's minus armor in the game, but I really like the to uh, the halberd here against a windrunner. She has blink. She still needs a damage item, and if she's forced to go BKB before that, this is just icing on the cake for Huskar. So he's gonna have a grand old time, and I believe BKB is the only thing that dispels Heaven's halberd in this game. So and death, I guess. Have to remember about that dispel on death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She needs like two more items for sure. She needs the MKB and she needs the BKB. And given the rate of this game, she might not find the time to find it. So. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we mentioned it in the draft. It did feel like Secret have a lineup that needs a lot of farm to get online. As I say this, we're having. Oh, goodness. They try to get close, the go. Close. Can they kill who's relocating in? It's going to be DJ Ron. We are. He needs to pop that window on. He does manage to get it off, but he doesn't have Shackle for three more seconds. Axmo coming back in on that quap. And now it feels like all of Secret need to get all the way out of here. They are buying time for Envy, but really only buying time if he doesn't end up going down here. And oh no, he's come into the engagement. I hear that we've got a Shackle onto Seneco. They're going to lose the IO. But again, this Huskar is big enough that it doesn't feel like he needs it. There's going to be a silence coming out onto Envy. He may have Searing changed them up, but I don't think this is the fight you want to take in again. He's just trying to play evasively. He could TP top and maybe get his farm on after dropping a remnant, so he's got a few options. He does go for another Searing Chains onto Dichira, but again, I don't think he's a target they can take down right now. No, he, he doesn't care about the chains. As a matter of fact, he's probably thanking Envy. He lost life points without being forced to pop armlet or anything like that, so yeah. Envy he's fine. happy. And Envy finally TPs up to top tower. He actually almost, he's very close to that Battle Fury. He's like 150 he gold. Rolling Blade and he'll probably yeah. drop an or like the Stout Shield maybe. Don't know. Yeah, he's gonna pick that up and maybe help the split push. But when Dendi comes into the lane like this, he can't stay around. Yeah, and he remnants down to the bottom lane. I mean, his remnant placement has also been really ballsy on Envy's part. It feels like he's really playing with fire here and I'm... I don't want to say anything because I feel like I'm definitely not, you know, I'm I'm a Dota 2 caster. I don't want to, I don't know exactly what Secret's game plan is here, but it does feel like if they can just make space for Envy and Weeha, they have this game in the bag and they're really not going for it. We actually see Misery. He's been gone on by Axma. Where is the, oh, the relocate comes oh in, but goodness. the Shackle, it manages to hit onto the Dominated Creep. They're working on Seneco. They're going to manage to take him out, but they still have to deal with Dichira and they've lost the Timbersaw. Pylite died, turns invisible. How do they not have detection? 
Who was probably on the IO. Of course it was on the IO. He's their support player. You don't make your cause by detection. And that's going to cost them an easy kill on Pylai Dai, who is still running around tracking people. The rest of Secret is up here. I think they've seen Dendi. The silence coming up with the shackle. Max range. How does that land? We are. He's going to pop that wind run. And they have now the shackles as well from De uh, from Envy going down. Dichira, he's on the back foot. I actually think if he turns and fights, he would die. But he'd probably take a few of them into that grave with him. But we are getting another shackle. Tackle, focus fire off cooldown because he has the ags and this is exactly what secret needed to get themselves back into the game that's going to be a 2000 net worth swing maybe even more when they yeah that was almost a 3000 net worth swing when we include the kill on dj raw so well played to secret finally making something happen and i have to say a lot of that really good patience a lot of players go on the shackle player instead we all make sure to take out Seneco. yeah go for i'm able to chase down heroes again the, with the Wind Ranger Wind Run, it's so hard to take down this hero without the, a ridiculous amount of magic damage because Oscar, you, you just can't uh, life break into the hero and not expect to get turned around without the Wind Run. It, too much. So even Huskar finding himself in a spot where he's vulnerable now because he probably wants an AC. Um, not sure if he's going to ever convert the Brown Boots into anything, but if he doesn't get the AC, he'll need the MKB. But then oh, that would yeah. hurt his tank. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this. I also cast a lot of the South American Dota, and there is a Huskar build in South America, which is the No Boots build. Nice. And they'll go all the way up to... Usually they get it after the Heaven's Halberd or the Solar Crest, but they will pick up Omelette, Helm of the Dominator, and another item, and they're still rocking No Boots, and they just use the Dunk to get around. <laughs> they just life break people to move. It's actually kind of... I think it's something which here he can do it very well because with the IO you're often being relocated into range but the life break actually oh we can't see it because he's dead but the life break actually doesn't have a huge range and so having some extra movement speed is helpful on the hero but yeah. either way puppy's picked up a solar crest this is about to help a lot you throw it on that huskar not only is he easier to kill but maybe if you're lucky he'll miss some of those flaming spheres for goodness sake yeah, yeah. this is very disruptive he's definitely going to need the mkb or at least the bkb now. Again, it's, uh, it's getting to that point where Na'Vi, they have this lineup, they don't have too many disables, too many tools to shut down the split push. So they, they should have tried to do something or something, and it's just been a while ever since they took Weehaw's Aegis uh, nicely at bottom down there. They haven't been main making the aggressive moves. Weehaw's already got one piece of his MKB. So I'm really surprised by this. Io's going for a Yules. I feel like, obviously, you know... Io's a hero, very flexible in what items he can go for, and he's pretty happy just having a bottle and an urn, although of course if you can get more farmed it makes sense. I I mean, I think yes, the Yules will help disrupt Windrunner's damage output, and maybe MVs as well, but it wasn't the item I was expecting, I guess. Hmm. In the meantime, there's a gem on Axmo, so he's able to scout some wards and really find the Bounty Hunter lingering around. I think they I think they just spotted each other, but yeah, Bounty Hunter mm. just blinks away with this newly purchased. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be really rough. They actually smoked up three, hoping that Puppy, Weeha, and Misery, they should have enough damage output to pick off one person. But they understand completely what's going on on the lineup of Na'Vi. And since they just got a gem, they were grouping up dewarding, making sure that their jungle's safe. We can see they're finally at a vision advantage in their own jungle, for I, what I feel is the first time in this game, since previously Secret had a ward here, a ward here, a ward here. <laughs> you know? It had a lot of vision. The last few minutes, of course, that's been all expired at the same time, and all they have is the two wards remaining as soon as that ends, I think. So, they have one on the map now, and one that got countered in the woods. Yeah. So, as you said, vision's limited. Now they're gonna get this push, it looks like we might be seeing a tower trade. Weeha, of course, gonna clear that tower, or oh, even maybe faster than all of these heroes. Also, Weeha, doing good work towards that MKB, gonna help out. They actually glip it, and uh, Weeha's not gonna be able to get it, so... They take one bit. and protect one. Yeah. Pretty good move by Navi here. Radiance yeah. Middle Tower. Um, I also have to say I'm a little bit surprised that Pylai Dai went for the Blink Dagger. Obviously, it's helpful here when there could be a relocate in. You need to get away as fast as possible so you're not dusted. Or maybe the Quap blinks in. You need to blink away after being silenced. I feel like Secret, since they're fighting into a lineup that has a mech and they don't have one, and you know, obviously Bounty Hunter these days is the mech carrier into Guardian Greaves eventually, a little surprised. But are we going to see a high ground push? 
no kind of control here, but of course with Weehaw having an Aghanim Scepter, you can go for this. You can just kind of poke at this, uh, and they are letting Navi. them on Navi. They just want the Roshan onto the Huska, or maybe the Dendi. We're going to be seeing folks relocating in. They've taken Dendi back with them. They throw out the Chakram. It's going to slow people up, but Weehaw, he needs to get away. He does have that Blink active, and he may just Blink over the ridge there, or be thinking about Blinking back in for some action. And we also can see that Pylai Dai had a great idea that they were going for this Aegis. And now Envy's here, because of course, who doesn't want your entire team to have a Blink Dagger? Envy's not going to be left out. They're just going to take down an Alpha Wolf with great prejudice. This is animal cruelty. They're doing it. They're doing it live. Um, yeah, so they stop not only Na'Vi from taking the Aegis and uh, now have good vision of it, they can still keep pressuring this top tower. Weehaw's just chilling up here, and as long as he doesn't go down, which is definitely a big ask, but as long as he doesn't go down, he can keep chipping away at that since he's got the Ags. Yeah, he, he's probably just going to stick around the area and just keep power shotting down the waves. He has the Blink Dagger, and he recognizes that the Na'Vi don't have too many tools to jump on him or get on top. So this could very well turn into a pretty bad engagement for Navi if they don't approach this with a lot of caution. We yeah. see Ember Spirit up here now as well, as you mentioned, he had the Blink Dagger from earlier, and that gives him even more ability as well as Chase ability. And did Envy just... his only Remnant expired, so he... Yeah, I mean, I think the Blink is also, it's his way of countering the Orchid. It looks like he doesn't feel like going a Manta since it will delay other damage output and it doesn't exactly help against a lot of the other stuff coming out. Oh, oh Quab's gonna see them though, and now Envy, he's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna actually kill off Axel, it looks like, and with Seneco going down too, the gem is on the deck. Envy, he does manage to pick it up, he drops his bottle for it. They have to get some kills here though, otherwise, oh goodness, Dendi on the back lines, getting into a world of trouble, but DJR doing Huskell things. That was the saddest timber chain I've ever seen coming out of Misery, and now... Weehaw, he's going to be dunked on Envy. He's trying to do damage, but he just needs to leave with the gem. And it looks like he should be able to. Weehaw as well going for that TP out, but he's going to go down instead. Oh, goodness, Envy, he's still there. What is he doing? He wants to go ham. He wants to kill somebody off. He's actually going to remnant right on top of DJ Raw, but then remnanting to the second one, getting away, TPing out. He secured them the gem. Wouldn't be surprised if he just drops it off in base. Yeah, there he goes. Drops it off in base. Makes pretty gem sounds. I think his bottle was killed by someone. Lost to the world. And yeah, um, actually, I think a good team fight coming out of Secret again, and especially since they took it kind of in a really awful spot. Gem, of course, not shown in this experience and net worth exchange. So well played. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure if Soneko had the opportunity to actually introdu introduce his Yule Scepter. I feel like he could have delayed his death a little bit, but he he melted so fast. And we yeah. are coming in with the uh, from the side with a nice shackle on two targets. Starting with the execution on Axmo here, so he all he could do was a uh, orchid, and he ulted nicely, but it missed the. Uh, it only hit Weah actually. So, yeah. yeah, nice fight again by Secret. It's a lot of a lot of vision related fights. They had the track on a couple of heroes, and it didn't give the same vision as a. But yeah. they initiated the fight the way they wanted to, and the exchange reco uh, it results in a three to two exchange in favor of Secret. And maybe freeing up some map space to go do something like the Roshan, though, of course, they still have this dominated creep. The Hill Troll Priest, who gives actually really good healing per uh, mana cost, is going to be in that Roshan. <laughs> oh my gosh. He just what? put it onto the creep itself. He's going to Rosh, and we are going to spot him out. Oh no! I didn't realize he put it. I thought you were oh knowing about. Oh goodness, the dunk is continuing through the blink. Weehaw, he's going to pop that uh, wind run and maybe be able to get out. And the shackle oh, under my Roshan! Goodness. DJ Raw is going to go down. No, but the mech comes out. They don't have enough damage. MB, he's trying to do what he can from the high ground. Seneco managing to relocate back in. The courier somehow died. I didn't even catch how that one went down, but that was a beautiful shackle. There's going to be another set of steering chains. Seneco onto a tree, and goodbye. They managed to pop off the Requiem of Souls, it, the debuff does hit a number of people, but it is just going to reduce auto attack damage, and suddenly going for this Roshan looks grim indeed for the lineup of Na'Vi. Well played, I have to say. Okay, we all make jokes about how Shackle Shot hits improbable uh, shackles, you know. It does actually even have, I think, 50% degree of... Oh, and he's going back in. We'll talk about Weehaw in a second. Are they going to keep going? They're tracking up a lot of these players, knowing the Quop's movement really going to help them out here. At the same time, Dijira, he is still scary as anything, and if he has backup, I'm not sure they can take him out, especially since Seneko is back. Okay, Seneko it looks is like... back along with the rest of Na'Vi, indeed. <laughs> Well played. Um, oh goodness, Envy! He manages to get the pick off on the swap. Now we're gonna see the Yules. It's gonna get rid of uh, that Flame God. And oh, DJ Raw, he's been caught out again. But do they have the damage? The MKB isn't up yet. And there were so many misses. It looks like Puppy gonna sacrifice his life for a Weeha. Weeha is actually still staying around. He does have the Blink away, but then now they've, it's been disabled. He has to Wind Run here. He'll have Blink up in two seconds. They can't do anything. There he goes. He's out. But Envy, oh gosh, he's still in there. 
working on Dendi. Envy and Denby. Dendi, actually quite similar. I'm constantly concerned I'm saying the wrong thing, I say, as the outro of this team fight. They might actually still be going in for more. Oh goodness, Denby, what are you doing? You don't have the flame god, it's finally up. He's gonna take quite a bit of damage. He's gonna remnant away, but suddenly Misery, he's in the thick of it. Timber Chain has a really short cooldown though, and again, since they have no lockdown, he just goes scepters and Timber Chains away. He is gonna be fine. Oh goodness, or is he? He needs to get up another Timber Chain, but he's too short. Ends up losing a bunch of bloodstone charges and misery goes down. And we still see, by the way, Envy is still just farming creeps casually in this bottom lane. He is out of remnants by the looks of things. Gonna go for that TP out and he should be fine. He actually has to use the final remnant. He couldn't place any more aggressively and another one comes up of cooldown. But he is playing so riskily. He's really living on the edge there. And, you know, that remnant that he used at the end... And I'm not that sure if it's really necessary. Nice yeah. That remnant at the end there was really, really nice by him. Oh my goodness, we are, we are going in again at the same time on the other side of the team fight. We do see Pilot I finally go down. I think this may have been We Hog's last hurrah. How is he going to get his Blink Dagger off this way? He actually power shots, hoping to get some more movement in the creeps, but he is going down. And <laughs> Yeah. Walking out and finally Rokan. Finally, I just feel like maybe Secret, again, as we talked about, they're not out of it by any means yet. They, I think they're actually starting to come online now with their heroes, especially since they've got the Cleave and uh, Chrysalis up on Envy. But I'm not try quite sure they need to be playing so aggressively here. I, I understand that the Roshan is a big objective, but it does feel like if they just sat back a little bit, maybe use the Slider Fists over the pit, they could have done a lot of work, especially with the lack of lockdown. We're going to be seeing a relocate coming out. They've brought two healing he heroes, though, and Misery, he's silenced up. He's taking a lot of damage, but he should be able to ch uh, chain away. Instead, he's thrown up in the Yules, and goodbye, Misery. Down to three Bloodstone charges. At the same time, they're working away on art style. Uh, MB actually can't because of the Ghost Scepter, and now the rest of the team... No, what? Where is the rest of Navi gone? They're just letting art style die. MB actually remnants away, understanding how close they are. So, these team fights really weird i'm not gonna lie and i actually want us to check on items because i feel like okay i feel like the net worth very close to even experience very close to even and we probably missed some items we all still doesn't have that mkb there was a query that went down with 1850 net worth oh um, let me check what was on it cannot because uh, uh yeah i don't have for dia it was a stout shield for so... radiant the courier died I, cool. I don't know how to uh, check it was. It. Oh, it was the full AC, not full. Well, it's the chainmail and the uh, oh, soul the components, huh? So yeah, okay. it's actually a real pain. Just for folks who are wondering, you have to rebind courier. Um, I use config files. I don't know about you, Clevoins, but you have to rebind the courier to a new. You have to unbind it from the previous hotkey you have it on, and then rebind it to a new hotkey. So um, oh yeah. I see. You know, I it, actually just click. I click my regular courier hotkey, yeah. and I can see it now. So yeah, something I learned today. For me, it's overloaded because in casting f1 f2 and so on um f2 is courier default and f2 in casting is showing radiant or f3 yeah, yeah, is dia yeah. vision, vision so mm -hmm. yeah so i set it to nine big big old casting tricks nobody probably cares about this let's talk about the game <laughs> we have an aegis of course up on the husker he's got heaven's hell but he has an ac on his dead courier um and dendi sergeant yasha mkb helm of the dominator this is a shadow fiend that hits like a truck but cleave doesn't care about your evasion so maybe they can do something up here to help out and let's see they're actually maybe thinking about trading do you think this is the right decision oh, oh no they, they're actually they certainly can't find into the aegis i don't think without losing oh. some as oh, you as say, they, say they that, can't fight into the Aegis. We are. He does have the MKB up, but the tower's already gone. Envy, he's going to need to crit for his life. He needs to get the biggest of crits. They're going to be a Rax down by the looks of things, but Weeha, he's going ham. Requiem Soul's coming out, reducing all of their damage. Ryo has to buy back, but he gets shackled immediately off of the buyback. They have taken down the Raid Boss and alt style to boot. And now let's see if they can find anything else. There's another gem on the deck. They have to catch up Dichira again. They might be able to save their base and Dichira. He is caught in by those Searing Chains. He is going down at a gem pops out of him they are going to be very happy on secret for trade do they have anything to stop axmo they get it so well played there by misery i mean okay i'm not gonna lie i i didn't have a lot of faith in this timber saw not because it's misery just because the hero is not terribly popular right now but well played and that was a buyback on the io as well which is going to stunt his item growth yeah you know that fight was actually done very elegantly i say um, although I do want to admit, I think Na'Vi, having five heroes on the high ground hitting the hitting the tower there, and then letting Cle Ember cleave off of every hero, especially yeah. with his Daedalus now, uh, I don't know about that one. I, I thought how the fight was going to be approached was the Huskar and the, the Queen.
Pain would just be the, not the Queen of Pain, Huskar and the Shadow Fiend would be the ones hitting the Raxes, and everybody else would be way far out of the Sleight of Fist range, and you tether the Huskar and still be out of Sleight of Fist or, well, maybe not Sleight of Fist, but at least out of Shackle range. He got Shackled twice, once before he uh, before he died and af once, uh, once again after he died and came back. Yep. So, I don't know, I think, I think there was a lot of positional error coming out of Navi in that engagement. It is kind of why people pick up the Windrunner into the IO. It is traditionally a bit easier to land those shackles since you know there's going to be someone behind. So really well played there and Envy is starting to get bigger and bigger. He'll probably swap out the wand or the Aquila at some point for another damage item. And because there are so few stuns, I mean other than the awkward on Quap, Envy doesn't have too much other than damage to worry about. He can just go, he can go full gloss cannon oh, if you like him. Oh, Pilot dies. Pilot die. He's murdering couriers as he often does. And wait, was that AC oh, again, yeah, it, it didn't actually complete on DJ Rai, it just stopped there, and it's probably one of those courier oh, things no. when it has too many commands. Did he? That's so devastating, it was exactly, this AC has been delayed for I think 9 minutes now. This, this is... is fantastic for, well played Pilot Die, well played. Very, oh. very, and he's got a gem now too, so he's gonna be able to counter up some wards yeah. if there are any. Unfortunately for him, there's actually nothing from side of Navi. <laughs> Yeah, kind of funny. Game. All of their visions already been dewarded. Pilot are doing a great job. They have this ward. This is a catch out MV when he's doing remnant plays. Um, but other than that, they don't have too much. And speaking of MV doing remnant plays, it is. Oh, oh, let's see that auto attack follow. He doesn't have crits though on Dendi, so it's not going to be that hard of an auto attack. It's still oh, pretty, yeah. yeah oh, it, it even stunned. It did the mini stun. Yeah, from the so, MKB. And if he was yeah. in the AoE, he'd be taking minus six armor as well. Probably more <laughs> damage. Dendi is really, really strong. I think his next item is actually going to be a very critical pick. He obviously can't do... As much as you want to get evasion against Ember because you can just yeah. dodge that sleight of fist, he can't do it against the Wind Ranger. It's just not logical. I think with Oscar picking up the AC, he might want to invest into... Uh, I mean, I think BKB is fine, honestly. He just wants to tank up and maybe even a blink. Just something that helps him get in there. Maybe Satanic just to tank up even better. You're he not a fan a of options. more damage? Oh, I think he went Sheepstick, actually. Oh and Radiant my gosh! Courier again! This time, the completed cheap stick for three minutes until 45 minutes, basically. <laughs> Navi cannot leave the base. Also, I feel like that was a rebought Korea, wasn't it? Yeah, they it was already a new one. Had... Yeah, the other one has the AC, this know. one has a sheep stick. I don't know if I can check the rebought Korea's life. I can't, but as you said, it was the sheep stick, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I don't think I've been in a game with this many Koreas die. Uh, Joy, a joy to call something like this. <laughs> oh, this I'm is, sorry, this it's is just comical. As you can see, this is the result. Navi, they're missing out, like... 10k worth of farm between the missing AC and the sheep stick. And I don't know how that's counted in net worth graph. Because now we're seeing that secret is 7.5, almost 10,000 net worth ahead. I think it's counting those big items. We'll, we'll see. I actually don't know how this works. Perhaps Vengeance knows. So since there is a bit, finally, a lull in the action, this game, uh, not quite a kill a minute, but still, considering how they could have played it on Secret, I think we're all the action packed. Let's quickly take a look at items. Alt Style has another gem up on him. Huskar is rocking, uh, well, when he finally... Oh, oh we had a relocate. Can they catch on Envy? Finally, and yeah, as you said, that ward, it does work. And MB's gonna know, I think, now that there's yeah, a ward he, up he here. Yeah, he knows for sure now. Really nice pickup by him. Even Axmo picking up Sheep Six. So all of a sudden, when the Couriers do respawn, Davi have two more tools to catch out a sneaky Ember, mm -hmm. uh, Ember Spirit or the Wind Ranger. It's pretty devastating. So, I. I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see how this team fight goes. It feels like if both teams just play it cool and don't force these engagements too much, because I think a lot of the problem that Na'Vi had in the top engagement was that they really forced it. You see this in games a lot, that going for the- Oh goodness, the shackle doesn't latch, doesn't quite get it, but if that shackle had latched- And Weehaw, he's actually going to be stunned up here. Who are they bringing in though? He's wind running, but the balls from Io hitting him, and now he's picking up! Weehaw might be going down here, Timbersaw is coming in to give him a handout, they don't see him. Oh no, he takes the damage, he can't blink away! He's up in the air with the Yules, and Misery, I think, just has to let Weehaw go down. A really unfortunate series of events, and uh, Pilai Die, he's actually trying to de-ward this, but is yeah, unable he's struggling. to. <laughs> I'm not sure if he tried to blink up there, but unfortunately for him, heroes cannot go up there, only once. Yeah, I think he tried to blink and then tried to force stop as well, so yeah. not... Now he purchased, as you can see in his stash, he's got an obs board ready to go. He's gonna need a tangle with that as well, because he's yeah. the melee hero, he can't kill that. It's gonna be, maybe he hopes that he can blink up there with, or maybe Envy will be around since Envy. No, no, they, no none blocks. of them can kill. Oh, yeah, Envy has the battle Yeah, because he has so. the battle fear. Yeah, so. yeah. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> tower is under 
very comical game, somewhat. Either way, we have items coming out on people. We relocate. haven't talked about this. Oh no, we have no chance to talk about it. We have a relocate coming out and it looks like they're just gonna melt. Misery, he's gonna go down five bloodstone charges. He's actually managed to get some back, but I think after the relocate ends, they might be able to pick up DJ Ra here if they play it right. Unfortunately, it's not the right heroes for this. They need the Windrunner, still dead. I don't think MV's big enough yet. And finally, Huskar has picked up that AC and the Sheepstick is picked up on Dendi. So that's going to be the pickup that we talked about. And I don't think it's bad at all, right? It's clearly no, no. one where he can get a lot of damage out onto people. Weeha, we've seen, doesn't have a BKB yet, is the next item that we're going to see on this Windrunner. But hopefully it's not too little too late for the high ground push. I think this is I think this is still a really good time. They've demonstrated that they can still pick off these heroes and I mean anytime you get two sheep stick and sheep sticks and an AC together it's uh gonna be strong. So Dazzle has picked up a lotus orb. Um it's nice here. There are a couple of things it'll reflect, like the silence and quap. She'll have to be careful about who she uses it on. Of course, the paralyzing cask. The dunk interaction may actually... I, I'm not sure whether you meet in the middle, or you both dunk to each other's location. Do you meet in the middle of the dunk? That sounds logical. Uh, sorry, but I mean the life break. When you lotus orb, life break a lotus orb target. Actually, I've never seen that interaction before. Well, well you may be in for a treat. <laughs> Yeah. I'm excited for that one. I, I think it's not a terribly great thing to ref Of course, the Huskar takes a yeah, little bit less damage there. Yeah, I would the gets the better end of that yeah. exchange. Since it's magical, and of course he's Huskar. But uh, it'll be interesting. It looks like we're seeing Dendi. He is in a little bit of a bad spot. He does end up throwing out the Sheep Stick, but Axmo immediately shackled the Weehaw. He doesn't care about your Requiem Souls, but they have the Relocate coming out. There's a gem on the deck. Weehaw is actually pretty low. He needs to get out of there. He dealt a bit of damage to him, and on the sidelines, it looks like everybody on Secret trying to back out. I'm trying to get the zoom out because Ambi, he is going in, but oh no, he doesn't have that Flame God. Doesn't matter. They have pure damage. Ghost Scepter doesn't help against that. And now Misery, can they kite around here? Seneko, he is tracked up. He is in for a world of hurt as Envy just pounds away on him. He might have invis, but your track doesn't care about that. And out of nowhere, Secret have taken out three heroes and Roshan. They know it's about to respawn because this is a max respawn timer. So Secret have secured themselves three kills and a Roshan. Mm, very nicely done by them, of course. Again, the, the pin take apart strategy coming out of their lineup. The vision yeah. advantage, bounty owner, and all their wards <laughs> nicely placed. Really and nicely done. We can see the net worth chart was reacting to the courier snipes. Okay, I actually hadn't seen this before, but yeah, you can see it shot right back up when the couriers respawned and they got their items off of it. So, fun facts. Um, yeah, we're gonna be going in. We can see lots of MPKB procs coming out from people. It's gonna be excitement. Agus and cheese, Agus and cheese. We have dropped this. <laughs> Indeed, that's going to be coming out, and of course, um, I actually am surprised. Who is the cheese on? They put it on Misery. I understand that Ember is going for this Gloss Cannon build, but I was kind of maybe expecting him to get at least the cheese, just in case he's taking a lot of those Burning Spears or something. I think, um, I think if anything, Ember should have gotten the Aegis, and Windrunner yeah. should have gotten the cheese. I don't think keeping alive the Timbersaw, who's building all these uh, survivable survivability items in the first place, is, is mm -hmm. the right approach. I mean, just very well close out the game maybe with a second life on Timbersaw. I do know he yeah. hasn't been killing himself with the Bloodstone the entire game, so they've been yeah. losing out a little bit on that. It's really interesting. I don't know whether he just didn't I'm want it to sure be... pretty sure he forgot about it. About oh. Close. Oh yeah, he showed that range creep, Weeha. You got him. Um, yeah, it could be that he forgot about it. It could just be that he's trying to save it for an instance where he can use it actually to heal up his teammates if he gets low. Um, I think it's actually a really great pickup here against the Huskar because, of course, if Huskar bothers to keep attacking you while you're already going to die from Boning Spears, it's a bit of a waste of the Huskar's time if there's anyone else around. But then if he doesn't, of course, it makes it very easy for uh, Timbersaw just to kind of back and then use that Bloodstone to heal up his allies. Yeah. The heal is definitely nice. Again, this game, he died like three times ever since. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, denying the gold is a really big deal and denying the EXP as well, but... Oh, it could also be because they have a Dazzle. Might be that he was expecting saves from Puppy, but he's not the chosen one. Who knows? Pylai dies, stalking up on to the Quap. Gonna be no such luck since she blinks away. So many Ghost Scepters this game. I have to say, I'm loving what we're seeing here, both in terms of play and itemization. I think the Sheep Stick really small... Sheep Sticks? really smart from Navi, and then of course the Ghost Scepters. I mean, Windrunner not exactly got another option once you pop that Ghost. Yeah. Uh, oh, another thing I do want to note, uh, a lot of players tend to do this out of panic. Mm -hmm. When you pick up Ghost against the Ember, when you Ghost before the Ember actually slide a fist on you, you dodge the slight. It's as if you're not a target. And oftentimes they try to slight combo with the chain, and it completely mm -hmm. misses. 
What a lot of players do out of panic is uh, once they get Sleight of Fisted and Chain, they'll yeah. use the Gold Scepter, and it's already too late, and they're just gonna take extra damage from the Chain. Of course, the or Ember can't right-click you, but... Burning, yeah, from yeah. the Flame God. So... How does that work with Cleave, though? Does the Cleave still affect you? I know Cleave ignores Evasion. I'm not sure on the damage type, because Ghost Scepter's all physical. It's Yeah, it's still physical damage, so it doesn't matter, right? So. I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. Yep, Rock. so it, it is something where if they're alone, if they're trying to use the Sleight of Fist to catch someone out, which is a really common usage, as you said, best play, you see the Ember coming towards you, maybe you just go step to get a little bit of extra distance. And Yeah, it's, if you're not going to go step go step there before, it's not worth go stepping after. Uh, unless unless you're going to go step there like, uh, when he's running at you or something, yeah. that's different. And most of the time, people don't have it in the early stages like that. Yeah. So Pilot Die has been rocking the same items for a long time. Um, I mean, he's a support bounty hunter. We expect him to be poor and sad and only good for killing couriers. There's gonna be a slide of his searing chains onto d 2 But he, again, he doesn't mind getting a little bit low and they have the Lincoln Sphere thrown out on Envy. They have a Lotus Orb as well. Who exactly is rocking this Lincoln's? Is it, oh, well played. It's gonna be on Misery, but I hear Focus Fire coming out and now we are is made into a little bit of a piggy. Is gonna take literally no damage from that death ward and just wandering away. So they just I mean it's not too big of a deal since I still think they have a lot of physical damage coming out from the rest of them, but not great going into a team fight without having your death ward. Yeah, and also it's really nice for the Lotus to be able to dispel the sheep stick disable coming out from Navi. Really nicely done by Puppy there. Is it? It does dispel the sheep stick. I wasn't yeah, sure if it was a hard the, dispel. The oh, okay, so it's a hard very, dispel. Very, very strong. It's a 4k gold item, counter 5.5k gold item. And 100%. we can see Dandy now. He had to actually change up his item build. He dropped the Helm of Dominator, thinking that he doesn't need as much sustain oh. as much bronze damage. Got a so, blink as well, so mobility is very important. This game. Excellent. So it will not move the uh, owner of the spell. Yeah, I have to say, I was expecting Dendi to go into the crit because it did feel like they need a bit more damage, and uh, I think the sheep stick is a nice pickup, but yeah, as you said, he's completely swapped out his items. I actually don't think a satanic is bad here, but it's like, he'd have to get rid of the blink. Maybe when they're base sieging, you go for the satanic. Either way, when you're base sieging, Weeha just doesn't care. He's got an agent. MV dump jumps deep in. Gonna remnant away, but Misery, he's in there, and I think they're getting a range track. So Io goes down elsewhere. Weeha still taking quite a bit of damage, but again, has that Aegis. Has it for quite a bit longer, I think, now, and might just end up getting the Racks, but DJ Raw, he is pounding away on people. He's taking a lot of pure damage at the same time from the shock room. But I don't know if they have the rest of the damage output. And the Death Ward is back up. We are gonna wander away. Actually, just pops deep BKB. Was that a first hit bash? No, I think that was just the duration of the Death Ward. They get stunned out. They've finally broken the base. It's gonna be Secret, the first to do that. And Dendi thinking about that Requiem of Souls, but I think Secret might just back out since Weeha no longer has Aegis, no longer has BKB, but he wants this rack! A huge slide of his Searing Chains coming out, and yeah, they get Dichiro as well! They just have too much damage, it looks like, coming out from the lineup of Secret. Axel is gonna post pop that Ghost Scepter, but it's not enough, and now Weeha, he's gonna have Focus Fire back up in three seconds, and he's gonna walk away on this tower. These Lincoln Spears and Lotus Orbs doing so much work on the lineup of Secret. Yeah, and again, Navi is just not able to find the opening. The Wisp as well as the Witch Doctor down. Do they have enough tools? Here we go. Oh, MV just blinks in, gets off the Searing Chains onto two. We all may be a little piggy, but nobody seems to care on the lineup of Secret. And Misery, he is playing all up in their faces. Finally gets silenced up, but this damage from Dietra Ra, it's at the point in the game where the Searing Chains aren't nearly as scary as they used to be. Pure damage coming out from Misery again. Dietra Ra, if he goes down here again, he'll be dead for extra time since he used the buyback there. And now, We are just waiting on that Focus Fire. One more second and goodbye melee Rax. and here he goes he is doing a lot of damage he doesn't even have his crit stick on him and that'll be that they decide to back out so well played from secret don't know yet how long the roshan spawn time will be but they also did a really great job of burning that aegis right about at the time that it was going to expire it was really close secret just taking this whole game very methodically from here on out and uh again we need this this sf this game gonna need like eight slots worth of items but he just can't get it he doesn't have yeah. enough uh, inventory space and uh, even if he finishes the daedalus if he opts for that here i don't know uh, he still needs the bkb to be able to fight this it's not the fact that he's gonna sheep himself through the lotus orb it's uh it's just so many disables and magic damage coming out on the side of secret that can disrupt like disrupt the purpose of why he has a blink dagger in the first place if you want to be mobile and if you want to get on top of him you need to make sure when you're on top of him you can actually do something no, yeah. he just cannot get on top of him. 
I think it was really also a bit of a dropped issue. Secret got a perfect lineup to pick the Ember Spirit into, and that was when they second picked the Ember Spirit. Or it was either second or fourth. I forget who had the first. Yeah, they certainly are picking the card. I, I do think, again, their strategy is a, a bit easier to execute in the sense that you don't have to fight at all. But if you consider the fact that how they have been fighting and how they have gotten cut off, I feel like Navi definitely had opportunities to push the issue. I just don't think they took the opportunities when they saw them. So it has a little bit to do with the offlane Queen of Pain as well. She's about to die, but... Oh goodness, and as you say, she's about to die. There's gonna be a relocate coming out as I'm checking over items. Misery taking a lot of damage, but he may go down. There's gonna be the Shallow Grave. Will he finally use that suicide? Is it time, Misery? He does! Well played. See, he was just waiting for Puppy to help him out the whole time. I know. Oh, and what happens here? Axmo, he has gone really far out. And Windrunner's gonna shackle him, focus by a goodbye. I... That was a buyback. That's, that's a dieback now. Oh. Yeah, let's take a quick look -sees at the status. We have one buyback left on Dendi. Albeit, they're not rocking a lot of them on Secret, but at the same time, uh, they're in the dominant position. Although, we are at the state in the game where anybody makes a mistake, you can lose a Rax. Because they I mean, do Dendi's have exposed. buyback is completely irrelevant. He needs to drop either Blink or Crystallis and finish up the BKB. He cannot fight this game without a BKB. It's just not yeah. happening. Oh, we're going to be seeing D2R shackled up again. They managed to... St oh, goodness. We are. He's taking too much damage. He manages to get off the Shallow Grave in time. But Dendi hitting like a truck with that MKB. It doesn't care about your Windrun. And maybe this will make Secret play a little bit more carefully. But it looks like they're content to push in again. MB, Envy with the... Okay, I don't think I've seen this on an Ember Spirit before. This just Envy things. Oh, never mind. All style blown up. No time to talk about Envy things. He's going to get the Searing Chains out onto D2R as well. Even though it's not doing huge amounts of damage is just zoning him it allows we to just casually poke away at the melee racks and envy he might just go for another blink in searing chains remnant away if you don't think you can hit him on the slide of fist and oh goodness speaking of slide of fist did you wrong he's almost toggling seeing what he can do here the lincoln's has been broken on misery but that life break it has a very short cooldown they could go in again he's getting ready for it it looks like he just needs a target to go in on and now it's dendy he's the one in a lot of trouble i expect an immediate buyback but he doesn't go for it and Seneko he bones down did you gonna go GG's might be cold if Dendi doesn't manage to do mad work with this buyback. And even if he does, GG's may be cold. What is he going to do? The Searing Slide of Fist ends up missing. They call the GG. We're going into a third game in this last chance survival star ladder action. Yep, and what better game to ask for than between Navi versus Secret? With Secret yeah. finally picking up their first win in what feels like it's been ages. Yeah, um, either way, I'm super excited. Let's get ourselves into that third game as soon as possible, folks. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. We've had Vengeance, or you can see his Twitter handle on stats. We're also joined by Clairvoyance, who you can find over on Twitter as Clairvoyance101. Please check him out sometime. We'd all love your feedback on how to get better, so feel free to leave that for us in those avenues. Or um, I'm Llama Down Under on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook, so throw